Let's talk about how the stereo upgrade in this 2011 Mustang went. I put in a JVC KW Z1000W 10.1 inch floating display head unit. Put in a bunch of associated electronics like a backup camera, dash camera, and wireless phone charging. And frankly, uh, after driving it for a little bit and working out some of the bugs, I really, really like the system. Now, it's a big commitment to put in a system like this. Basically, you get rid of 40 buttons on the radio stack and four knobs. <laughs> you're gonna get, you're gonna hide your screen, your sync screen, because the best way to install this screen is at full up height and full inboard so that you have the most room for your gear shift. Um, it's not giving me any trouble with shifting gears. It's reasonably close to the gear shift and there are, is the occasional time where I reach down for the shifter and I touch a button on the bottom of the stereo, but it's not really a problem. However, if you mounted it down lower, it could be a problem. So let me show you a few of the things that are of interest. First of all, when you put it in a Mustang like this, you more or less commit to get rid of all of the buttons that are on the dash or on the dash kit. Also, you need to have it raised up high enough so it doesn't interfere with the gear shift. That means you're going to lose your sync screen as well. But after you look at the whole thing, you realize there's basically nothing on the sync screen that's required that isn't also replicated on, on the radio. And um, there are a few buttons on the radio and you've still got your steering wheel buttons and you can make everything work. On a modern car, most of the controls are on the screen anyway, so it's not that much of a stretch. Okay, what do we like about it? Well, <laughs> wireless CarPlay. This is one of the key reasons to have something like this. Shows us our ways. Um, we can bring up our uh, we can bring up our stereo, and one of the things that I find particularly helpful is it lets us access our Sirius XM streaming. So I have uh, a Sirius subscription. It's locked to one particular vehicle, but I have streaming, and I have enough data on my cell phone that I can listen to it anywhere. I can hook the phone up. This is a really seamless way to make it work. I've been using it with a suction cup mount on the windshield and a Bluetooth connection. That's nowhere near as nice as this. The way I have this car set up now, I jump in, I throw the phone into this little pocket where I have a wireless uh, charger. It connects wirelessly and seamlessly to the JVC and then I can go ahead and listen to Sirius or to iTunes or to the radio or whatever else that I want. Hopefully you can see on this video, uh, you can see the little charging icon. This wireless charging setup is working really well. Okay, another thing I like is it's got a pop-up display. So I have CarPlay in my Escalade, but there's no way to bring up any of the radio controls without fully switching back to the radio controls. But with this setup, you can, you can press pop-up and you can go ahead and select select various items from the pop-up display some of which are configurable these ones up here are configurable these ones down here are configurable so you can make them be whatever you want um, <laughs> I did find that these configurable buttons are mostly useless because the kind of stuff that you can configure on here is uh, is all setup type stuff, right? You can put the camera on there, but I only have one camera, that's the backup camera. You can put the phone on there, maybe that'd be useful. You can put control screen of current source, not particularly useful because there's other ways to get at that. You can put your streaming DJ on, that might be useful if you're in a car with a bunch of other people who have cell phones that are all hooked up to it. And you can put all these setup features and audio uh, features on. These are rarely used 
sort of once in a while features which aren't particularly helpful on a pop-up like that. But the fact that you can do a pop-up, you're in CarPlay, you're on Waze, you can do a pop-up and uh, get access to uh, configurable functions is pretty neat. All right, your home button here lets you go straight back to home. What about the heater controls? This is one of the key things because you don't have any more heater buttons. You know, there's 40 buttons or something on the original display. Where did all that stuff go? Well, there's a couple of things that I did here. You can go in here, touch your source setup, and you can then select uh, climate and bring up your climate control functions. This gives you the full meal deal, including the heated seats, which are in this convertible, air conditioning, your air doors, uh, fr front and rear defrost, fan uh, select, and uh, uh, temperature select. That brings that screen up, and that's the screen it's on. You can always press home, go back to your source that way. It's not that hard. But, I programmed the steering wheel buttons, so if I press and hold the source select button, it brings this screen up. So I can access that directly from the steering wheel. That's neat. But an even neater thing is, I programmed the volume up and down and the next and last track or fast forward rewind buttons on the steering wheel. So if you press and hold them, you get correspondingly fan up or down uh, and heat up or down. But watch what happens. If I press for fan up, I get the fan turned up one tick, but it brings up the climate display. So now I can go ahead and make adjustments to the climate while that's up. And then it quickly disappears and goes back to what you were in. So say you were in CarPlay and you pressed fan up. We don't really want the fan up that high. We make our adjustments and then it'll shortly go back to CarPlay. That's really neat. Another thing I found out, if you're on the home screen here, you can just drag from the right and in here you have a little mini climate control setup which you can which you can adjust the temperature and you can adjust the fan maybe just with the buttons. Turn the AC on or off, change your air door and you can also this is called the operation tray, you can also change uh, your equalizer parameters and so on. That's pretty neat. The main screen is all configurable so you can have it in a single widget mode which just has got one thing on it. You can have it in a split widget mode and you can flick these between various widgets. Something I did find disconcerting is this is only a display. There is no configurability here doesn't let you, <laughs> well if you touch it, it'll switch to show you the tire pressures, but it's only a display actually. Compass, that's a way more useful compass than Ford's compass which just has uh, eight points of the compass. This goes up in uh, five degree increments. You can put photos on here, these are some stock photos that came with the car, your clock, uh, and your audio track. Now. If you're, if you're playing an audio source from uh, CarPlay and you switch back to this main screen, it still shows you all the details of your audio source in CarPlay. That's not something my Escalade does. If you switch out of the CarPlay screen, you don't have any details of the audio source. I also found that while driving with Waze on, even if I switch back to this home screen, I'll still get alerts from Waze. So that's pretty neat as well. <coughs> And you've got this vehicle info screen, which is kind of neat. Um, the car originally it has tire pressure uh, monitor system in it, but it never ever showed you the inflation pressure of your tires. Here you can see the inflation pressure of each tire. You can see the system voltage, and it'll do stuff like show you if you have a door ajar. So that's kind of neat. Oh, by the way, <laughs> when you're on uh, climate, it shows the outside temperature there. 
So that's something that's on the main screen or on the sync screen that you've lost, but uh, you don't really lose it because it shows up there. One of the cool things about this JVC deck is the gauge system. You press the pop-up. I've got gauges selected as one of my configurable buttons here. I can go into gauges and then I have a completely configurable gauge display. <clears throat> you can set the values of each of these gauges. By default they have some values that you already have on the dash, but there's no need to replicate those. You can do things like, here I've got AFR in the center, my temperature's on the right, uh, my outside temperature on the left, which replaces the outside temperature display on the sink screen, and my uh, instantaneous <clears throat> mile per gallon. You have a couple of different displays. Here uh, on P2, they have it set up to give you 0 to 60 in uh, performance, uh, performance information. You can go back to your uh, others. You can set both the uh, uh, P1 and P2 displays, so you have two completely configurable gauge displays. And when you got the gauges up, you have a quick bar along the bottom here, so it's really easy to switch back and forth, say, between CarPlay and gauges. To get in there, you touch your pop-up, touch gauges. When you want to go back to CarPlay, you hit CarPlay. Just that simple. I did have some trouble because I have a Air Force interceptor gauge and one of Tech Motion's gauge plots on the left-hand vent. And that system seemed like it interfered with the OBD2 gauges on the new JVC deck and caused them to not display. But I finally found a setting uh, where you go in and you set the OBD communications parameters to on always or always on in the JVC. And then both the uh, interceptor gauge and the OBD2 gauges on the JVC deck seem to work. The system has all kinds of audio control functions. I'm not going to get into all the details of audio control. It's got a cool equalizer. You can set up all your speaker locations and distances. I think if you want to get into some serious audio configuration, this is a really cool, uh, a really cool system. Oh, and I should point out that there are volume buttons up and down right on here. Now, what about practicality? Look at the gear shift clearance. It's fine. You can see I can run through all the gears here. No problem. Another thing I found really helpful is the backup camera system. I didn't do anything special to configure this and I set it up with a wireless backup camera but it really is a useful display and it automatically engages when I put it in reverse. When I take it out of reverse, it's gone. And I didn't have to do anything to get that configured. It, uh, it just works. So that's, uh, that's turned out to be a really useful system. Wireless phone charging isn't part of the JVC system, but I added a custom system that really complements the wireless CarPlay system well, and it works flawlessly. See more about this in another video, and get your own charger insert at techmotion.etsy.com. So, Overall, I'd say the system has worked fantastic. I get in the car, I throw my phone in the uh, charger tray, everything connects, uh, I put it in reverse, I can see a backup camera display, I drive away, I can listen to Sirius, I can listen to whatever I want, I have Waze up on the screen, and it's really worked out like I wanted. So I'm going to say it's a great upgrade. Um, I find the heater controls are straightforward to get at, maybe easier than I thought they would be, and uh, I don't miss all my 40 buttons and four knobs that I originally had. Working with the screen has uh, been fantastic. So if you want to do this in uh, your own Mustang, I encourage you to. It costs a little bit of money, all right, but you end up with a much more modern kind of a car, and frankly, it's the only thing that was bugging me about this car was the lack of modern technology features. The rest of this car is fantastic. So, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 for the whole upgrade. It really worked out the way I wanted.